Well, let's find out more now. We can speak to Adrian Zenz, to whom the data was leaked. Uh, Adrian, thank you so much uh, for joining us. You work at the Washington uh, Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. You've been campaigning to raise awareness about the actual situation in Western China's Xinjiang province. Can I just start by asking you, how did these hacked documents reach you to begin with? The study of Chinese government documents is a very uh, niche topic among academics that not many engage in. Um, I've done this now for uh, many years and uh, specialized in the subject. And so over time, people have been giving me uh, leaked documents or I was involved in their authentication. And I think by now people, uh, people understand that I'm sort of one of the go-to people to give this kind of material to authenticate it and to publish uh, reliable academic work on it. Um, and these documents, unlike anything we've seen before, uh, in terms of their content, what do you find most striking? <laughs> the documents are actually striking on multiple levels, on almost every level. Uh, because there's so many, they cover a wide range. So we have high-level speeches implicating Xi Jinping himself. We have Chen Xuanguo giving orders to arrest Uyghurs like hardened criminals to shoot to prevent escapes. We have uh, security instructions for re-education camps showing police forces, heavily armed police, what weapons, watchtower guards are to use sniper rifles, uh, machine guns, uh, military grade machine guns being used to defend or guard detainees in a re-education camp. And of course the images. And you know, of course China says this is all fake, it's the lie of the century. How can we be absolutely certain that this whole cache of documents is, is genuine? What steps did you do uh, to really make sure that, the, that this was the, the, the real deal? So I, I compared and authenticated the, uh, the documents uh, among each other and uh, compared them to existing leaked documents that have been extensively analyzed and researched by scholars, including myself. Um, we have done uh, checks on internal consistency and compared we were able to independently verify the identities of quite a few of those shown in the files uh, with outside uh, evidence, including by the media outlets. We were able to geolocate several of the cams and the descriptions and the images. But I think most importantly, a leak, uh, a hack of this size with so much visual material. And we also have PowerPoints with police drills. We have images from within not only the camps, but also from police headquarters. Highly sensitive information. So uh, really, the amount and the nature of this material, I think, makes it quite clear. Nobody can make this up. Michelle Bachelet is visiting Xinjiang. Um, can I start by asking you, you know, do you think her visit will achieve anything? And can I then go on to ask, you know, was this leak designed to coincide with her visit or is that just a coincidence? The leak was going to be published earlier, so it is basically a coincidence that it ended up being published now. It got pushed back several times. Um, I certainly think that her visit is a mistake because it provides more than anything a photo opportunity for Beijing. We've already seen that her being pictured with Wang Yi holding a book by Xi Jinping on human rights, the very person who told the authorities in Xinjiang uh, you need more prison guards for your overflowing detention centers. Uh, so she, she should not have provided this photo opportunity for Beijing's propaganda. Instead, she should have just sent out a scouting teams of experts, a low key visits by people trying to access some real facilities. Um, I think this was certainly a mistake. But thankfully, we have uh, other material and independent evidence such as this to contextualize her visit and make sure that it's not a complete force. Absolutely. And I just want to ask you lastly, I mean, what are the attitudes amongst ordinary Chinese people towards the plight of the Uyghur people? Is it indifference or ignorance or a mixture of the two? It's complicated. Many simply know nothing other than Chinese propaganda. They're, they're heavily shielded from any independent information or they don't trust it. Others think the Uyghurs should be treated harshly because they belong to China and they have uh, uh, committed acts of violence and resisted Beijing's rule. And there's quite a few Chinese who think they should just get in line and, and uh, they, they should be put maybe even into camps. Of course, if they realize the scale and the nature of it, they might think somewhat differently. But I think there also are, we see uh, 
because of censorship is difficult to see. But there are Chinese who are aware that something's wrong. There's at least some level of discrimination. But many of them just don't have good access to information. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking uh, the time to speak to us on what I've sh I'm sure has been a very busy day for you. Uh, Adrian Zenz, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.